Hey, how's it going, guys? So we are here um, at Fire and Dice. I didn't get a chance to get the interview from Sean Pluto in Oceanside, but I have him with me today. Sean Pluto, what place did you get out in Oceanside? First place, finally. Yes, he ended up taking that League Cup and brought it home for us, which is really good. What were you playing that day? I was playing Zorak, Lycan Rock. Perfect. All right, so let's get into the deck profile and see exactly what you were playing. Okay, uh, first off, Zorak line was really thick. 4-4 four, four, and 1. So I ran 4 Zorak GX. I see a lot of people just running 3, but I just love the consistency of pretty much always having one in hand turn 1. Uh, I don't think there was ever a time where I didn't get a Zorak GX turn by turn 2. Um, so I just, I'll never not run 4 in any Zorak deck ever. I will ever never again. cut that line. Okay. Because uh, I just, I don't like breaking, and this helps so much. And Stan and Zorak is busted. Um, even with outs like Skyfield or anything like that, if you have a Kakui and a Choice Band, you hit uh, you can hit 210 on an opponent if they benched a full if they benched a full line. So yeah, the Kakui plus the Zorak is just like super busted. Even in standard, I will not cut like either of those two cards nice. for sure. But yeah, that's the Zorak line. <laughs> and kind of a thinner. Lycan Rock line because of that, so it's just 3-3. Three, three. Um, uh, I based the list off of the Memphis, like the first place uh, in Memphis, but I cut a Rock Ruff for, I think the Mew, or the Mewtwo. Um, but I still kept three Lycan Rock because I just, again, I like consistency, so I like pretty much being able to find that extra Lysander, even if I've already used two, or if one was prized or something like that, or if I have to discard one early. Um, so yeah, so just for Pokemon wise, it was just max consistency, making sure I could get my main two attackers out, and like the two point of the decks. So. Three Lele, again, just consistency. Between three Lele, three Bridget, four Ultra Ball, I only missed turn one Bridget one time the whole day. Nice. So, yeah. And then the Mewtwo, I expected there to be a lot of buzz wall. There was, and I actually only ended up using it one time, but it was in top four, and it's like the reason I won the game. So, Awesome. Uh, supporters, supporters, four in, pretty straightforward. I mean, it's like one of the best supporters in the game. Uh, you need it to swing, like comebacks and stuff like that. Especially in your bad matchups like Elisapod, you really want to be able to find N because if they first impression you and they're down to like two prizes, you just end them to two and then, and then, they and get then slowly start bringing it back. Yeah. yeah. So four in, super crucial for that. Three Bridget, like I said, you never miss it. So between the three Bridget, the uh, four Ultra Ball, and the three Lele, had it every turn, uh, turn one, except for one time. But even then, I like I didn't really need it. And then the extra ones you just trade away for later, so you don't have to like make hard decisions on what you're gonna cut away for trade. Would you uh, would you cut a Bridget? No, so you would I keep would. you would keep it at three. Yeah, I would always keep it at three. Okay. Yep. In, it, just in a Zorak deck. If, it, if they don't have the ability to trade those dead cards away later, I wouldn't run three. Okay. Yeah. Two Sycamore, two Kukui. Uh, some decks just ran the four Sycamore. I know uh, my friend Oren, who also ran this deck, just went with the, the four Sycamore, I think, and no Kukui. Or maybe just one. But I personally don't really see a reason to run four Kukui or four Sycamore in a deck like this because you really don't need to Sycamore that often. It's not that necessary. Normally you're trading into what you want and and you're not trying to discard all your resources with Sycamore. This is like specifically for when you can lay lay for a clean Sycamore, or if you just really have to dig for like a DCE or something. And the Kakui's just come in clutch too much. Bloodthirsty Eyes up a Lele and Choice Ban, and Kakui kills the Lele with the Zora with Riotus Beating. Right. So you can kill a Lele without ever wasting your GX attack, and you can take one shots that way. So like basically your game plan is two shot something with Zorark. Uh, one shot something, like one shot the Lele with the Kakui play, and then one shot something with your Lycan Rock, and that's your six prizes. Your Lycan Rock, or if not the stand in Zorak. Yeah, exactly, or stand in Zorak. So either way, you just take those th those six prizes really easily, three knockouts, and that's it. Nice. So the Kakui is super clutch. Two Guzma, you do run puzzles, so you can get them back, and also you have three Lysander with Bloodthirsty Eyes, so it's really not that necessary to run a thick Guzma line. Uh, I only run one Floatstone, so it is nice to have that kind of like mobility. Uh, every once in a while, but yeah, most part you just use Bloodthirsty Eyes, and this is just like a backup. Uh, one Mallow, one Acerola. I'm really 
iffy on this. This is the only thing that I would maybe change. I would maybe cut this Acerola entirely for a second Mallow. Mallow is so good turn two that it blows my mind. If you have a Zorark in hand, you can just Lele for the Mallow. Just get the DCE, get the Floatstone or whatever you need to get out of the active and start putting pressure on without having to risk not finding the DCE off a Sycamore or off an in or something like that. And after I use this card, I find there's always one more situation where I wish I had one. So I think maybe cut Acerola for another Mallow because I don't think I Acerola once okay. the whole day. But and like I see the I see the point, but I just think this is so useful that I might run two Mallow. All right. And then for items, you got your four Ultra Balls. Just search out all your Pokemon. Like I said, helps you get the turn one Bridget. Helps you get your Zorox. So that's just every day. Four puzzles, mostly to get back. Um, honestly, I got Mallow back more than anything, probably. Mallow, your DCEs, because you don't run a special charge, so you need the puzzles to get that back. Mm -hmm. Hammers, you know, just whatever the situation comes up. And it's better to use puzzles to get your DCEs back instead yep. of trying to dig with them for with special charge. Exactly. And, again, it's like one of those things where... If you're running a Zorark deck and you're not running puzzles, it's really weird because you can trade into the second puzzle so easily or you can mallow for the second puzzle that you need. Like it's this card is really inconsistent unless you have a draw engine like Zorark, so it just makes sense. Three choice ban. Uh, some lists run two because it's not super necessary, but I just like being able to find the three that I need for those three knockouts like I was talking about. So one for the Kakui play, one for like your stand-in, and then one for your uh, GX attack. Two enhanced stammer. Special energy is everywhere right now. Uh, helps a lot in the mirror. Helps a lot against Buzzwall. Helps against your hard matchups like Elisapod. It's just super good card right now. Uh, special energy is... Ramp it. One rescue stretcher, one float stone. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. I think most lists are running two, but like I said, I I just you feel comfortable with just the one. Yeah, I felt fine without it. Between the four DCs, sometimes you got to burn one to retreat or whatever. But uh, again, Mallow. Like I just I would always Mallow for Floatstone, and I found it. It was never prized, so I got lucky there. But that was pretty much my play turn two every time was Bridget turn one, put a Zorak GX down, Mallow for the Floatstone and the DC, start attacking. Nice, and, and that's it. Two field blower. I expected to hit uh, Garb at some point, and I did not want to like only play one and prize it, or just like have to burn it early for some reason. And yeah, I ended up playing two Gully Garbs in top eight, so came in clutch. Also, I played two Volks, and they were both running uh, Fury Belts, and I cannot one shot Volks with Fury Belts, so this was this was super helpful. Nice. For the energy count, I did four DCE, two strong and three fighting. So in the Memphis winning list, this was switched to three strong and two fighting, but I knew that Enhanced Hammer was everywhere, mm -hmm. and I never really need to put both strong energy on the same Lycanroc unless I'm like trying to knock out a Lele or something. So I would rather find, or have better chances of finding this turn one, so that they can't Enhanced Hammer away my like turn one energy attachment. attachment That's basically what it is. is you want to attach this later rather than like on your first turn or something, because it's just a waste. You want to conserve it so then when the time is right, you can do that extra 20 for the knockout. Exactly. And like, yeah, the, the extra 20, it's not like I need multiple extra 20s when I'm hitting for probably 200 250 damage anyway, so yeah, I just I just like the consistency of having the three strong, and that's it. Cool, perfect. All right, guys, that was uh, the deck list right there. All right, guys, so that was pretty much the list right there. What are your thoughts after the tournament? I know it's a couple days after, but still thinking back, like what was what were your thoughts after the tournament? Uh, I was really sick that day. I don't remember half of what happened. I was on the verge of like throwing up the whole time in yeah. top eight. Yeah, I remember that. I was also in the ER the day before with like a back problem. So I was I was super surprised every round I won. I feel like I got lucky because I didn't hit Galissapod Garb or Buzzwall until top eight. And then even then, every round I like I saw my bracket and it was Galissapod Garb, Buzzwall, Galissapod Garb. And I was like, well I'm just gonna get seventh and like go home. Go but home. But you ended up just kind of kept working out. Uh, I don't know, deck just never failed me all day. Cool. There was only, like I said, there was one round where I didn't get turn one Bridget, and I still won that game, it was against the Hulk. Nice. So, I think I got very lucky, and then also I just, I think this is the best deck in standard right now, for sure. Cool. So. And what was one of your hardest matches of the day? The hardest one was definitely the first round of top eight, 
uh, against the first Golly Garb. He was so good. And all three games came down to both of us having like one or two prizes. But that was like the most fun I've had and also the most stressful and definitely the hardest. And I'm still not sure if I cheated on that one round. Yeah. But uh, full disclosure, man, like I was just so sick that I don't remember. And if I did, I'll send you one of the Lele's I bought because I don't want to win like that. Yeah. But, well, we'll find out in a couple of days yeah. once I edit all that all yeah. that good footage. But, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was it was a good time. I, it was like I definitely needed a win at that time because I was like really sick and stuff. But, it just felt good to win after that, so it was cool. Cool. And moving forward, we do have Riverside coming up yeah. uh, this week. Will you be playing uh, something similar? I know you can switch this up and play it in Expanded. Yeah, I played it in Expanded a couple times testing, but I just like uh, Monozoro better. I refuse to call it Lone Zoro. I think it's the dumbest name ever. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just going to call it Monozoro. I'm definitely going to be playing that Saturday. It's like my new favorite deck in Expanded. Cool. Like, for standard, it's hard because I usually come with four decks and I try to like call the meta. But with expanded, I'm just absolutely in love with that deck, so it's very easy for me to call that and just play that. Perfect. All right, Sean Pluto, thank you so much for being on the channel. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me, yes. David Benitez. You're you're Pokemon welcome. hero. Thank you. At and. We wish nothing but the best for you in your future upcoming events. Thank you. Uh, I know you're not going to Dallas, but you are going to St. Louis. So yep. hopefully you do well at St. Louis, and that that'll push you into your invite for Worlds this year. That would be wonderful. Yes, that would. That's the dream. <laughs> that's the dream. But yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to share the video for anybody that wants to know what got first place in Oceanside. With that said, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time.